Good evening from southern Poland, where we're on perhaps the most infamous site in Europe, the former Nazi death camp at Auschwitz. World leaders joined survivors here to keep alive the memory of the victims. Six million people, mostly Jewish, were murdered by the Nazis, more than a million of them in this camp. Well, 75 years ago today, the Soviet army liberated Auschwitz and it came to symbolise the horror of the Nazi regime. Today's ceremony had at its heart the survivors who urged the world never to forget the suffering here. Our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, was watching. Each anniversary, there are fewer survivors. Yet even after 75 years, there are still thousands of them left. Soon after dawn today, Igor Malitsky, prisoner number 188005, took part in a ceremony at the wall where tens of thousands were shot. Nowadays, Auschwitz is protected and restored so the world won't forget the terrible things that happened here. The infamous gateway to Auschwitz was covered over with a vast awning to protect the guests from the bitter cold of southern Poland. Royalty, world politicians, though no British ministers among them, religious leaders, but above all, the survivors themselves. Many proudly wore the blue and white stripes of the pyjamas which the Auschwitz inmates were forced to wear. Rows upon rows of seemingly unremarkable elderly people who are among the last living witnesses of unimaginable cruelty, the worst crime in human history, here in this great factory of death. In Auschwitz-Birkenau, I remember naked women driven in trucks from the barracks to the gas chamber. I can hear them screaming. I can hear it in my subconscious when I remember those events. As another speaker noted, nothing was done to stop the slaughter. Maybe I would like to cry, because only with tears I can tell you about this past. I hope you will all try to preserve the memory of this place and other sites where innocent people died. I hope you'll bear this responsibility so that this terrible thing will never happen again. There were thousands of Nazi concentration camps, but Auschwitz was by far the worst. 1.3 million people were brought here and 1.1 million of them died. The plan was to use industrial methods to wipe out the Jewish people. Understandably, many ex-prisoners are reluctant to come back. Among them, Chaya Frisch, who lives in Israel. She was sent to Auschwitz from Hungary at the age of 20 with her parents and sister. Now, though, she's decided she's got to show her daughter what it was like. With 70 others, she was jammed into a railway truck like this for three days with no food or water. Her mother and sister survived with her. Her father was sent directly to the gas chamber. Her father, they took her father. He said, he said that the father was the not right side and that's it. They didn't see him anymore. Tonight, after the gathering at the Auschwitz gateway, the guests went out and walked along the railway line where Dr. Joseph Mengele, the so-called angel of death, had once decided which of the new arrivals should live or die. They placed candles at the monument. This terrible death camp was planned to wipe out the Jewish people. It failed utterly. John Simpson, BBC News, Auschwitz. Well, among those who did manage to survive their time at Auschwitz was Anita Lasker-Valfish, who's now 94. She arrived here fe fearing the worst, but she escaped death by saying that she was a musician and, in this place of mass murder, torture and starvation, was signed up to play in the women's orchestra. I went to speak to the woman who came to be known as the cellist of Auschwitz at her home in North London.
There's a funny picture of me sitting on the floor with a children's broom and a comb and I was scraping that thing and I think my parents must have seen that and said I think she wants to play the cello. Anita Lasker Walfisch arrived in Auschwitz in 1943, fearing she was destined for the gas chamber. Prisoners sit and do the work, shaving your head and tattooing a number on your arm. So uh, this girl uh, asked me, where do you come from and, and what did you do before the war? And like an idiot, I said, uh, well, I used to play the cello. She said, fantastic, you'll be saved. Our job was every morning to sit at the gate and play marches for all the workers who worked out into the factory. And in the evening, we had to go again, sit outside the camp, and play marches again for the people who came back in. And we survived like we knew very well, as long as they want music, we will exist. The cello saved my life. How on earth did you endure that environment? You lived from one day to the other. Today I'm alive, tomorrow probably not. So that's what life was. Very, very short notice, yeah. After the horrors of the war, her love of music dominated her life. She helped found the English Chamber Orchestra, trying to put the past behind her. What has been the effect on your life afterwards of being a survivor? Well, I think I have never lost my sense of appreciation that I am alive and I have a house and I have enough food and... Yeah, I've never lost uh, being grateful somehow and appreciate what I've got. But the trauma didn't end. Her daughter Maya says she's been profoundly affected by being the child of a Holocaust survivor. Without a doubt, I absorbed unconsciously all of the trauma that uh, my mother tried so hard to contain. So my parents, my mother, really could not understand why, if I, and this is absolutely literal, if I wasn't about to be killed, and if I wasn't starving, what was my problem? Have you ever been bitter? I'm not bitter. I'm, I'm sad that really nothing seems to have changed. People kill each other as we are speaking now. Why? Why? Well, there was the extraordinary Anita Lasker Valfish there. Well, three quarters of a century has passed since this camp was liberated, but there remains inevitably an eerie, haunting chill to this place. Many of the old buildings are still here, including those where so many met their deaths. Today's event is possibly the last major gathering of the survivors. Last time, five years ago, there were 300 who came, this time just over 200. Their message, in a world where anti-Semitism is on the rise, the monstrous crimes committed here must never be forgotten. And with that, it's back to you, Clive. Rita, thank you. Rita Chakrabarti there, live in southern Poland.